Hey, this is Rob Unsbach, and welcome back to another edition of eHeroes. For those keeping count, this is episode 224. Today, we're going to talk about how to start a cult. Yeah, not a religious cult, a branding cult. So I brought the expert who wrote the book, Judy Ransford. So welcome, and thanks for being here. It's 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 three o'clock here in PA when we're recording. It's what nine o'clock there in the UK, and it's eight. Yeah, it's pretty late. Eight, My eight, children eight. have just gone to bed. Yeah, children have just gone to bed. Um, so yeah, yeah, but it's absolutely delighted to be speaking with you I, at long last. I, I wish my kids went to bed at that early. There's well, one a, of them's gone to bed. One of them's gone of them, to bed. Some the of them go is... to bed at one or two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff that they'll do to try and stay up, all of a sudden, you know, want to start, you know, uh, you know solving quadratic equations you know anything that they can possibly do to stay up but just uh, just uh, yeah. another another few minutes out of it it's quite incredible their, their quantum mechanics for... yeah exactly i know yeah, can, yeah what's the meaning of life daddy like really <laughs> one minute before you're going to bed that's what you want to discuss and you right say okay. the answer is 42 yeah yeah the, the answer is in your dreams go to bed that's it <laughs> i was glancing over this and i i did read half of it but I kept chuckling because you're like first intro, you talk about Ryan Reynolds, and I'm like, I'm I'm done. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, I always say, I always say that it says a lot about a person um, who picks up a book called How to Start a Cult and start and actually purchase it. So if any if people can't blame me for the book, you're the one that picked it up and started reading it. I think that is the that is the the, the fault does not lie with me. Yeah, you just wrote it. Uh, you know, we we have to actually physically read it, and but you know, once once you start reading it, it sucks you in. You you can't you can't put it down. Um, although you know, I, I have I have great. Although you yeah, did, I, I did put it down. Yeah, you know, <laughs> although you did, why? Where, where did it? Where did it break? I need we need a heat map it, in there. I need I, to know. <laughs> I I drank iced tea, which is anti. English, you know, it's, it's you guys got to have your hot tea. Mine's iced tea. So I think that's what yeah. gave me the superpowers to put it down. Brilliant. But anyway, it's been eight years since I saw you. Uh, we met in Vegas at a Joe Sugarman event. And uh, I had just come out with my first book and, and, and now I'm on 36 and 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 this is what your second or third, and, and this is just brilliant. It's my second. Yeah, you were there. Basically, <laughs> you were there at that seminal moment where I became a copywriter. That was my. That was my. Before that, I was a. Um, I was a journalist, and I, I, I was a journalist in the like film and TV entertainment, uh, and then I, I became a journalist in um, uh, health and fitness, and I was like transitioning over to over to copywriting, and I thought, oh, do you know what? I'll, this is going to be easy because you know writing for journalism writing for, you know writing copy for company that's going to be it's going to be so easy and then i came to the event and i'm like this is completely different from anything i've ever done i i actually know nothing that I, I literally have zero skills here that are going to be transferable um a few were but it, it kind of made me realize that it was re it was really eye opening that event um and that's that's really kind of like the start of um of both my journey into copywriting journey into marketing uh, branding and um, yeah, and, and everything that, that's come since. So you were there. You were there. And I don't know if you remember. We um, we we shared. We I think right at the end of the event, we 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 both tasted the um, deliciousness of uh, chronic tacos. I think it was called. Yeah, you remember that? Like the largest tacos I've ever ever <laughs> experienced in my life. They're huge. Yeah, huge. Just yeah. like this. No, this is it's for a family of nine. There's no way I'm supposed to eat and, this. And, and and the reason they call them chronic is because you're sick for three days afterwards. <laughs> yes, it's in the bathroom. indigestion, the indigestion yeah. that you suffer for the next twelve days. <laughs> <laughs> now it was it was one of those because I, I was in Vegas like the month before, and and at that time I was doing a lot of coaching for for carpet cleaners, which because I I had a carpet cleaning business. Yeah. Prior to be being this this guy who writes books and coaches people. And so I was at this event and um, Joe Sugarman says, hey, you're in Vegas. Stop on over. I'm like, oh, OK. So he took me through a, his tour of, of Blue Blockers headquarters. And and he says, hey, I'm doing this event next month. I want you to come. All right. 
I mean, I really hate Vegas, but I'll come. And yeah. um, so I did. And, and, you know, the amount of people that I met at that event, like you, I mean, I witnessed the birth of, of your creativity. And, and, and there was others there the same way. I mean, it was, I mean, it was like people were coming to see Joe Sugarman, but they didn't realize that they were becoming something more. Yeah, I mean, like the people in that room was insane. I, I just, I, I, I'm not sure. Apart from say, like, um, like Titans of Direct Response when, when, when they had that event. I don't know if you've had like as many kind of, you know, top level copywriters and marketers in a room. It was, it, it was just so utterly shocking. Like, just the amount, like, everywhere you look. Oh, Oh, I'm sat next to John Carlton. Oh, oh, look who's over. Yeah, it's just the, everywhere you looked. Um, and yeah, it was it was just insanely like and, just and the it, amount it, of talent. You had Joe Polish there and um, right. John Benson. It was it was insane. And it wasn't a big event. I mean, I I, no. I I know that Sugarman lost money on that event, but what he did was he he created a legacy. He created he created all these people that left that event that emulated him. And 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 I mean, we lost Joe Sugarman this year at, in March of, of 2022. So if you guys hear this down the road, uh, then yeah, it was it was uh, March of 2022. And and but he was a brilliant guy, and he and he made hundreds of millions of dollars selling blue blocker sunglasses, which I thought were the the horriblest looking uh, sunglasses <laughs> you could ever wear, but. You know, to go back to your book, How to Start a Cult, he created this cult awareness for these glasses that came out of the 80s, and people were still demanding them 20-some years later. Yeah, yeah. I think, like, you're even seeing um, people like Robert Downey Jr. wearing them as mm -hmm. well. Like, you know, the fact that they still, you know, it, 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 it has a... That particular brand has a resonance that goes, like... It, it, it not just within like marketing circles it kind of you know uh kind of emanates out from that into so many different into so many different things the amount of um the amount of advertising the amount of um uh brand work the uh just simply like the mechanics of how to create a uh a, an ad that looks like a a piece of content marketing that looks educational just like so much flowed from that it was it was insane yeah yeah so i mean we can talk about bad cults or we can talk about good cults i mean what was the inspiration to write this book other than so, probably you being sucked into one well no i just you know what i've not i i don't think i'm part of a cult i don't that's the thing so the the well, you never know do you that's the that's always the worrying thing you're like i'm definitely not part of a cult even though i've bought all of the merchandise and i go and go to this thing once a week and they tell me to do it and everything they say i buy and do um and you don't realize it until until the last minute so uh, as i as i make the point i'm a uh, uh, accidental cult leader so um <laughs> one of the things that came about is that um when like i said before i was a um uh, health and fitness journalist and I, and I wrote for a, a magazine called a uh, men's running magazine and that magazine was you know it, it was great it combined like running it combined exercise things like that but it did it in a really kind of funny way funny sarcastic so you know taking them in you know just all over absolutely brilliant and they they changed they changed it at, at one point and I stopped working for them and um I start and you know I start thinking actually do you know there's still a place in you know in this the whole running field and stuff for 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 you know for it being funny because it's you know I don't know if you ever met a runner like they're boring aren't they they're boring they talk about how fast they go they talk about they they use the word they don't use words like I you know I drink and eat they say I fuel and I hydrate you know they they're all like that so I was like there's a there's a place for people like who aren't like that and so a friend of mine. Um, he was, you know, I'd met him when I was um, amazing when I ran the Sierra Leone marathon um, uh, and I met him there and um, we we carried on this conversation afterwards and we eventually decided, oh, why don't we, why don't we just start recording our conversations? We go to the pub, we talk about running, we'll record our conversations um, and we'll just put it as a podcast. Like we've got this, you know, it's the laziest possible thing we can do. We don't got to write blogs. We haven't got to write anything. Let's just talk and we'll just see where it goes. And we did that. That was back in 2015. And we we just started talking. It was literally I was in my I was in my front room. He was in his office uh, and we just started having having conversations. We said, all right, 
these can't these right they're never going to be more than 20 minutes and cover like thing you know skip forward um seven years like our episodes are about one and a half hours two hours long we released like two a week we're on like 420 episodes now um we've spoken to some of like the biggest names in in, in ultra running um it just it kind of snowballed it kind of snowballed you know in terms of it. and what what was really interesting about this was that we did it in a really different way and we applied everything that we learned in terms of marketing and stuff just to a hobby so we weren't even trying to grow it we weren't trying to grow it we weren't trying to do anything special with it yeah we weren't trying to be clever we were just like all right well you know let's do something that looks a bit different than everyone else and so you know people go well, how did you work out the branding well i literally just did a row of all the other podcasts and i like right red nothing else is red so we'll do red and that was it that was my entire that's <laughs> I, like <laughs> all these branding agencies are not gonna like me saying that but it was as simple as that um and our tone was so different because we were just like I, I don't care if you go for, we don't care if you go for a run like we don't actually really like running that much <laughs> but we like talking about it so that was the kind of thing and so it started developing it started developing so a few people would, it's like that thing with with a podcast like nine people listen to it for about you know 5 years and then all of a sudden you know the, you got thousands and thousands of listeners and and more and more stuff kept coming from it so like um you know we started up a community you know, if, we started I had, selling... if i had nine listeners i'd be excited <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing it's you know when you can't name all your listeners personally uh you know that you're you're you're, you're doing well um but we you know, we we would have we we'd be the kind of podcast that would get um uh you know people would either really love or they'd really hate and when people really hated us, we absolutely loved that. And so I took all of those reviews, those one star reviews, and we started you know, putting them on T-shirts, putting on flags, banners, stuff like that. And they just people absolutely loved it. And um, where I was in, uh, I was in a, a business accelerator with you know, with my agency and I was walking around with a, a hoodie on a, a red hoodie, very distinctive. And on the back, it says something like um, uh, I can't remember what the exact thing was. It's. Uh, Oh, what was that? I need to look in my own book to find out what it <laughs> what it was. It's something like you. <laughs> why can't I remember the name? I've even I got it. It's like I do that all the time. Oh, <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry, I'm getting old. I used to be able to remember these things. I need. I should have all like what's it called? Post it notes over here. That's like uh, that's telling me what to do. Um. Oh yeah, that's it. It said on the back. It said crushing disappointment is earned <laughs> not given and so someone came out and goes what 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 does that mean like I was like oh yeah it's a demotivational uh sweater and so they were like oh, yeah and they started talking to me about the podcast and they said okay can you come and just do a presentation about how to how you grew your podcast and everything so I was like okay yeah that's fine you know I, I you know I can't turn it down if someone says come and speak to me I can't turn it down it's impossible and um so I thought okay being that being you know I want I want I want this to be like the best attended one of all the really boring mm. talks that they have at these things so I thought what I do I'm gonna give it a really good headline so I was looking up this deal like how I like, something about you know how to like you know what's it called like grab people's eyeballs or how to do that I'm like how to start a cult there we are that's a good one <laughs> like how to start a cult like people are gonna people are gonna come to that and that gets attention and so I thought oh this will be quite good so what I'll do is I'll get a framework I'll find out you know what all the traits are of a cult and I'll try and like tie it to the thing we did. And I was looking at the traits of a cult and I was going, hmm. Yeah, yeah, we've got a cult. It's a cult in any way. It's like, it's all the aspects are there. And so that is really where it came from. And from that, I then went and did, um, you know, I was invited to bigger events to, you know, people really like that talk. I was invited to bigger events. And, you know, I did one where I was like speaking to like uh, two or 300 people and, you know, uh, doing a kind of a workshop with everyone where everyone got to make their own cults and a lot of drinking based cults in that. That's, you know, typically British. Um, and um, and then eventually the, 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 you know, came, the book came out um, as a as a result of that. So it was really through like doing presentations and talking about it and workshops and you know the the, the fact that all these things have come. But I think you know it, the, the thing is that it has a real resonance with people in the sense that um, you know there's so much in life where you know people are so desperate for them to join their things. Oh please come please come and join my membership. Come and please join my group. Oh come and join my Facebook group. And like you know the thing that I advocate is like we actively stop people from like trying to listen to the pop-up because oh, maybe I should listen to the podcast. Like, eh, I don't think it's for you. I don't, I don't think you'll like it. Or can I join the group? Mm, I, again, I'm not, well, just give me the address. Nah, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I think, I think you'll, I think you'll be fine. I think, I don't, I don't think you, I don't think you need it. And so 
you know, it, and it's that thing of not being allowed into something all of a sudden makes it much more attractive. So I, I know I, it's um, it, it's hit, it's hit a note with a lot of people. I spoke at an event with a bunch of realtors, and uh, one of the first things I did was I said, "Okay, everybody, stand up," and they all stood up, and I said, "Everybody not wearing a red shirt, get out." <laughs> <laughs> and they just all looked at me like, you asshole, what? <laughs> I gained one client out of that whole event, and that's all I wanted. And that was my, my objective. <laughs> it was like 200 realtors. I got one client. And and to me, it was, and 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 a few people afterwards, like, ah, oh, that was the weirdest talk I ever heard. Uh, most people don't tell everybody to get out in the first few minutes of the talk. Whatever. Well, I like to, I like to, I like to make everyone do a promise that they won't use it. For, I like get people to stand up, and when I'm doing this talk, and like put their hand, I was, oh, I promise that I won't, you know, <laughs> use this for nefarious purposes, and so, and they will do it. And afterwards, I'm like, <laughs> what is wrong with you? Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm reading them going, is he serious? <laughs> I mean, like, but, but like, but people will do it. I'm like, like, I just, you, you want me to tell you how easy it is to tell people, you know, just tell someone to do something, and they, oh yeah, all right, I'll do that. I mean, I think it, I think you know, I think British people it's much easier to do. I think it is, you know, we we have this, you know, um, uh, an acceptance of authority in a way that other people don't. But um, but yeah, but it's incredible. But like, because you know, and big things come from it. Like that's the thing. So like, you know, when we when we after you know you know, building the, the 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 cult as it were, um, then uh, you know, we get invited to stuff. You know, we sell like a ton of merch. You know, people buying stuff. You know, from us. Which I I, I am no <laughs> I am no fashion retailer um as i quickly worked out and so you know i i've made all sorts of errors with um uh, like we, we don't you know we don't we it got to a point where actually we weren't delivering stuff for um it was taking about six months between someone ordering and someone actually receiving the merch and they loved it they it's like they have I, and I, I just i went on the group and i said we're not Amazon, like right. If you don't want it, like stop chasing. Stop. And I and 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 they absolutely loved it. And when when people started getting it, like a couple of days after they ordered, they felt disappointed, oh, as though they, they hadn't had the full experience. Your delivery system in the UK is horrible. Amazon uses Hermes, and Hermes. I don't know what they do with packages. I think they just throw them in a dumpster fire. Because I have sent so much packages over to oh Hermes, yeah, yeah Hermes, Hermes is and, so and, bad it rebranded, it rebranded to every and, uh, as and, we... yeah, and, and the, they they completely suck too. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, every every is like that's 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 how I've many lost packages will lose. More of these books in the UK. <laughs> I'm like, I say, have you gotten a book? No, I go to Amazon. Amazon's like, uh, yeah. We I, we know we promised it to be the delivered there uh, yesterday, but we're having problems with our deliveries. So three weeks go by. They've already shipped new stuff to these people. Now they and get I... another one. And I'm like, <laughs> you guys have to kick them out of the country. <laughs> yeah, they are bad. They are they are they are really bad. But yeah, I mean it it's uh I created my own accidental cult with these Rob versus books. Um there's six of them. Yeah, now. I can imagine. I, I can I, imagine. I, I, like, <laughs> I'm like, people are like, Rob. I'm like in the Dallas airport, and I'm trying to run away from people because. But I don't. The, the thing, but the thing is, don't you, like if people phone you or people speak to you, don't they feel disappointed if you're not like incredibly sarcastic? <laughs> I, it's like when you go to when you go to like Dick's Last Resort or something. <laughs> like you know, if you go to Dick's Last Resort and someone's nice to you, you're like what? That's not that's not how it's supposed to work. Like you have to, you now have to live up to that. That's the I, that's the I difficulty. Have to, I have to be sarcastic twenty four seven now to everybody. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and clients call me, or they'll, they'll email me now because they're afraid to call me. They're they're afraid to be in my book. <laughs> yeah. Like Rob, we're not even going to argue with you. Do whatever you want because we don't ever want to be in your book. <laughs> it was just I, there's there's a there's a certain amount of joy at making people absolutely frightened to work with you. I mean, I don't. They, it, it's not you won't ever read that in a business manual or, or anything about getting customers. But the more the 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 less you care, the more frightening you are, the more difficult you are. I mean, we 
like we even used to send like when people used to get um their their merch we send it and we used there used to be a handwritten note in it <laughs> saying things like I can't believe you've got an XL, you fatty. Um, or things like, or, or well, it's not very PC. Or things like, I can't believe you're buying more of this crap. You're funding Jody's holiday. And so, but they take photos of it and they'll post it on it. And people are like, oh, why didn't I, why didn't you abuse me? And my, you know, it, it, it's incredible. It's incredible just how special you can make people feel by making them feel like dirt. Yeah, so it's I, just. It's, uh... I, I mean, I love the whole idea of taking some of the, the negative reviews that, that you showed in the book and turning them into merch, turning them into shirts and, and stuff. And Because and, and, one, it becomes a conversation piece. You know, they're like, your service is effing boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and this is why you should, you know, go to this website. And Yeah. Like, you've got great, the thing is, if you have, you have like great, great, uh, negative reviews like we, you know, the th- kind of stuff that you really like worst running podcast ever I mean like that is gold <laughs> ever worst running podcast ever um what's it called uh someone someone else said like um beavers and butthead do running like perfect <laughs> like that is gold like no amount of positive reviews is going to make more people listen to it than that yeah so so that's the thing i mean that's the thing we we, you know, we weren't even trying and we created this 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 monster that came out of of, of the of the, of the podcast stuff like that and so it's you know it, it the, by doing that actually it helped formulate a lot of the and it helped like um change some of the the way that i presented uh when i was talking about you know developing marketing and developing messaging developing branding because all of those things are really boring mm-hmm. to uh people we're talking about it and so you go oh let's do well, let's do a messaging review or let's do let's do a branding workshop and let's do that i'm like but if we call it oh let's help you start a cult all of a sudden people are just like ah yes let's do that i want a cult i want this i want that um but yeah that's the that's the thing and even with even with them you know i like i i got you know i've got a, a you know facebook group for that i've got like you know people who are who are you know kind of like hanging around this you know this new cult that's around the how to start a cult book and and everything else and i make them jump through hoops like they want they want you know work you know, you know what the thing is like when they say oh you know you you download my book and you'll get some free resources and you get some resources and they'll send you an email saying you got to do this if you want the free resource and so you've got to keep jumping through hoops in order to get the things to prove that you're you know you're, you're dedicated enough and so and and people do it and that's the that's the great thing about it so uh because you've got to keep proving you've got to keep proving your thing works don't you like if, if i was sta- sat here starving going you know oh yeah this is my idea um you know then you know no one would buy into it but you know people have to experience that people have to you know feel as though they're kind of jumping through hoops in order to buy into it as well i think that's a, it's the best way to prove any concept yeah. is to ha- have people feel it's being used upon them now when i first met you in in, in vegas in 2014 uh was your company around i mean or did you start that after you got back? no i was i i was <laughs> i was just freelance so i was freelance and that was it the, the amazing thing with that was that i um had just done the um John Carter's simple writing system. That's the that was like the first like proper copywriting course that I'd done, and I'd gone there specifically to see if I could talk to him. So to find out when his um, you know the coaching um, part of it was very, but yeah, you know, if you know John Carlton, it's a, it's a very relaxed uh, business he runs, and so you know there was a like you know oh it might happen next year, it might happen you know <laughs> the year after you know. Uh, yeah, I'll bill you for it now, but then you know, it, it, you know we never know when it's going to happen, and so and, and eventually it did happen. And the great thing about that was that was when I met Kevin Rogers because I think Kevin Rogers was uh, was like road dogging for um, for John, um, you know, and so that that's when I met Kevin, and then I went in through through Kevin to to the thing, and I got um, you know you went through that process absolutely brilliant process of learning how to write copy mm-hmm. uh you know having someone over your shoulder it's just there's, there's no better way of doing it um you know and so you know just i had robert gibson as my as my copy coach and he was just incredible just absolutely incredible like the the stuff that I, and then you know the good thing about that is then you know i started you know I, I, I was there at the kind of the founder of copy chief you know mm-hmm. which um which kevin started up and which now has kind of grown into this you know almost a recruiter of copywriters for uh for 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 you know 
huge companies who have finally cottoned on to the value of of copy um and then you know through those contacts i got you know uh, you know kevin started passing me to some of his you know clients who you know and then to other people recommend them in and then i just started writing you know like thank um like long form sales copy you know email sequences things like that had you know incredible success with them very very early on very very quickly so i kind of it, it feels like it was really shortcutted that was like only eight years ago and all of that kind of happened within like four or five years and i think it's all you know partly with you know from that event but partly from the contacts that i made at that event and everything that came with it so um so yeah and you know and doing all that with a with a um uh with a british accent and uh, you know <laughs> and having to write in american uh mm. for, for most of those things i mean i think like you know, some of the so that's the funny thing like some of the um uh some of the other copywriters i met knowing that i'd written for certain uh certain clients and they're like they're like what a, a british vegan is writing for this this you know uh, this like guy who's like you know in this the whole like uh you know muscle bro uh testosterone you know we eat meat and you know guns for breakfast type market and i'm writing i'm you know tapping away at home writing all these like you know bestsellers for them you know no one knowing that it's that you know I, you know having to go at people who eat soy and estrogen and stuff like that oh that's me actually they're talking about so so yeah so um so yeah so that's yeah that's kind of it and then and then uh, as you know as you progress through you know your copywriting career stuff like that you know the in the uk market is not as sophisticated you know we do have people that um uh you know build businesses um you know online businesses mm -hmm. and you know buy into the copy and stuff like that but it's, it's certainly not sophisticated um and so you know the agency you know when i started the agency hello genius it was more about trying to bring direct response um principles to uh, to other to other types of marketing as well mm -hmm. so you know do a lot of copy a lot of content a lot you know we kind of it, we're more and more we're kind of try, transitioning into more of a kind of social media agency uh, mm -hmm. than anything because that just seems to dominate so much you know right. building funnels for people but also really kind of understanding what's what's on, on the front end I, I, I find that quite exciting when I was a when I was a journalist I like doing lots of different things and I do I, I am kind of a bit like that when it comes to um uh to, to write in copy i'm never niched into into right. anything i can go you know right every every you time know. i uh, have to switch from helping a, a a u.s client to a uk client i have to take a deep breath i have to be more patient and and i and a lot of the things that work in the u.s don't work in the uk and no. so it's like shit i gotta i gotta reframe my brain <laughs> back to 10 years ago like you know not even 10 years ago i don't even i wouldn't even say that i would like say further back it's never got there i mean there's just i mean there's a massive difference between a u.s client and a, and a uk client like a u.s client is like yeah that sounds good here's the payment let's go and a uk client is all right i'm gonna pay you this um but i need you to basically coach me through every single aspect of this because i just don't think it's gonna work right up to the point it works um yeah i don't then, i think this and then afterwards too long. they're like yeah you were lucky at work yeah, yeah, well, that was it. Like, <laughs> you got lucky there. That's it. No, no, that's absolutely. It's just the way. It's just there is a. There's a. There, I think there's a general, um, a general kind of feeling that Mark. The, the, you know, the big thing that you get asked, of course, is that you know when you're when you're writing for like because I just don't want it to sound too American, which is their shorthand for like I just just it sounds a bit American. I don't. Can we just make it sound less American? I'm like that's a very big country you're talking about there. Like, yeah, which part so. of America do you want? No, no, just you know, like, yeah, it just sounds a bit too enthusiastic. <laughs> it sounds a bit, a bit too say it. Which it sounds too desperate to say it. A bit too enthusiastic. A bit too positive. Can we just like dial it back? Make it a bit more negative. Not selling it. Maybe less copy. Maybe not send it at all. How about we not bother? No, it's kind of <laughs> that's how it goes. <laughs> yeah, you go from fifteen hundred words down to three. And you're yeah, like... exactly. <laughs> And it just says bye. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I, I they go, yeah, it sounds really it. salesy now with just the buy in there. Yeah, so. <laughs> Do we have to have a button? Is that it? It looks a bit aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, it's I've watched your company grow and, and your popularity is is um off the charts. I mean, you're really doing some good stuff. Oh, cheers, man. I appreciate it. And you, and you I as mean, well. I, I, as at you. least I mean, it's from the four people I've talked about. <laughs> yeah, that's it. 
And I say you're doing great stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's I, it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether I am or not, does it? As long as, as long as I, I I exist on a tissue of lies. But that you know, that's the that's the hey, key part of. Uh, as long as you've written a book, you've done something. Well, that's I it. Think. That's yeah. it. And look at this. I get. I'm getting more scam calls. <laughs> Thirty. You should do it like it's me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and it's like it's people you know, warning I, I start, you. Don't don't to listen to. Them. And they're like, "Fuck, it's you." I'm like, "Yeah, it's me. Why you keep calling me?" You know, <laughs> they already know it's me. Why? I, I I think it's their training center. They're training new people every day. To just yeah, call this guy. It's good. It, it... You know, you know that you've made it when you when you actually have your own chapter in a in a handbook. That's the that's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> where they just how oh, we deal it, with Rob. And it's it's funny because you know this was the first one, and I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. It was just me taking on the scammers. Six books later, I got this one, Rob versus the unicorns, and they get funnier, and they just write themselves. And I got two more coming out next year. And uh, people are like, "Are you gonna stop?" It's like, "How do you write? How do you write so <laughs> many books? You like you write not just books for yourself, but other people's books as uh, well." I, like, do, I got, do you? How much yeah. sleep do you get? Uh, about four hours a day. <laughs> 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 oh, no. yeah. other, I think you other... cut that down to two and get squeeze another two books in a month. Yeah, the other day I I, I actually slept eight hours and I felt miserable. <laughs> <laughs> I had stuff to do. I had I have that's, that's at least six hours of of of, an, of of annoying someone that I could have I could have been <laughs> could doing have I could have tormenting someone yeah. that would have been you know all I do is I take the material of the day you know whether I'm talking to scammers whether I'm talking to somebody else you know we live in this this world that that if you just look at the signs you can take all that material and turn it into books and podcasts and social content and 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 everything else, and I think people, yeah. especially my clients. I mean, I, I do a lot of work for lawyers and doctors, and they're just afraid of everything. Everything. <laughs> yeah, they've all gone to this Vulcan school of no emotion. Yeah. And and you know they don't want their personality to shine. They don't want people to see them as human. And 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 um, you know they go home at the, at the end of the day. I, I I don't I I think they just turn a switch off and then they fall down and the next day they come back up. It's like. Do you watch TV? Do you I read the paper? Do you do, do anything? No, I don't know. I'm not sure because I my I my degree was in was in law. So I you know I I you know my the the route that I was originally going to go down was uh, was was a law route, and so I you know I studied law because I thought I'm really good at arguing. So that is absolutely perfect for me. Um, and then I decided to go into journalism because, you know, I thought, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, what, I tell you there's one thing there's more money in than law. That'll be journalism. Um, so, I, so I went into that. But I do, I, I find it, I, I, the thing is, I remember in my, when I was doing my law degree that um, the, like the first few, the first few like lectures and stuff you go to, you know, people are kind of, kind of quite normal. But like by the third year, <laughs> people are wearing suits. People are wearing suits to like lectures. You're like, what is wrong? Who, who are you trying to impress? Like, why are you wearing a suit? Why do you even own a suit? Like, yeah. what? Like, are you going to co- like? It just doesn't make any sense. And so, I, I do believe that there is a, there's a switch or there is a pill or something that, as a lawyer, that you take that does actually probably just personality does not help in this situation. So we're gonna. But it's really funny because I always, I, I always use lawyers as the example. I'm always rude about lawyers because I feel like I'm able to be. Um, but I always think it's like lawyers and accountants like they have an opportunity to just like because tone of voice is so important to me and that storytelling thing you were talking about as well so the thing that i you know i was like i made that joke earlier about like, about being a journalist and not not actually having any transferable skills well the one transferable skill i do have is that you know when i was like a running journalist i i you know i, I am not good at running in any way so i had to make up you know for in different ways and so what i could do is like when i'm supposed to do a running report i'd find loads of stories around the run that we could incorporate into the thing it was more you you could barely tell i was on a run at all <laughs> i'd be incorporating all these stories in it so i became very good at hiding my lack of ability with 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 this i still don't think i did a very good job um but i you know i, I do think you know you can take story like you say you could take stories from anywhere it's i mean it's just i i just find it so easy to do 
um you know to will be i don't know what to write about and things like that it's just like literally walk out your front door and something weird will happen to you that you can use and if it doesn't happen to you there is something wrong with you because there are lots of you you i don't know where you live but there are so many weird people out there and so many weird experiences that you can have you can i mean i when i started I mean, writing my email list weird, and I st- look at that picture in the back there yeah that's weird yeah what well, Frida, Frida Carlo. <laughs> right. Yeah. But yeah, but it's just like this, but there's weird stuff all the time. And so like, you know, we, I started writing my email list, you know, doing the whole thing of, you know, uh, you know, make sure that you write an email list every day. One of the first lessons I learned, you know, as a, you know, as a, as a copywriter. And it was one of the things that, you know, j- trying to get British people to send an email is, <laughs> oh my God, you, it, it, oh. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like emails. Well, I don't care whether you like the emails, just like, just send a damn email. Like it's just, it, it it's an email. You think it was something more. You know this. You have to deal with this all the time. It's like we, yeah, I don't like it. I, I don't care what you don't like. Okay. So, so right email, but I found that I had to do this. And literally like the first week uh, I went out and I, I was thinking, oh, what am I going to write the thing? Like someone threw a, th- someone threw a, a, um, a biscuit, a cookie at me while I was walking along the road. I was like, what? well, that's weird. That doesn't happen to most people. And so that went into that email. Uh, you know, and then all of a sudden I can't start to think about all the weird stuff that I've done in my life and things like that. And you start, dread- and those are the things that people love. And I'm like, I'm not actually talking about marketing or copy here. I'm pivoting like right at the end. Um, and it's true. It's just, you know, you don't need, you don't, you know, people, I think, I think there's a big thing as well that's changed in marketing as well. This whole thing about give value, give value, give value, give value. People seeing they have to give value. I think we've gone beyond that now mm-hmm. people well, don't you know, but it, the, the, it's just the one much. thing that the one thing that joe sugarman did emphasize at this event in 2014 was all about storytelling <clears throat> and mm. it wasn't about forcing somebody on a product or a service it wasn't about you know shoving a brand down their throat it was about telling a story and at the end maybe you pivot a little bit into the product or the brand but people will remember that product and brand because of that story, not because of the pitch. Absolutely. And how they felt. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, that is the, and that's the, I think that's the thing with, with, with a lot of marketing now is that people are still, the, oh, I need to give away loads of value. I need to give away. And it's like, you know, people can get that anywhere. Like the thing that is really going to set you apart is being entertaining just entertaining and whether that's entertaining in a, making people laugh or entertaining in being you know ranty and hilarious and ridiculous or or may, even making people angry you know to some extent that 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 works but it's that's that's the thing that feel that's why people are not going to keep reading your stuff because it's useful people are going to keep reading your stuff because it entertains them mm-hmm. and you know that and if you if you kind of understand that it's like no one can compete with you like right. no you know because in your market you're going to have uh, you know, eh, you know. Say that you're a lawyer. You're gonna have loads of people giving legal advice. You're a an accountant. You're gonna have loads of people giving tax advice. You're like, wow, boring, 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 boring. Like, what is the thing that's really gonna connect them to you? It's gonna be your story. It's gonna be the stories of of the of the people. I don't know. Did you watch or follow the Click Funnels Two launch in any way? Right. Okay. Now this is a perfect because example. For me, of it was always about. You're one funnel away from a mental. Oh uh, no, no, this is no, 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 no. This was your first funnel. Now this was, but it was an absolute masterclass because you essentially had, and this was a, a perfect example of storytelling. Storytelling, um, pure outcome, pure emotion. You know, and essentially what what happened was that there was a like a, a tiny bit of, of telling people, yeah. You know, of how you you know to set up a funnel how to set up click funnels how to get in deep enough so you feel invested and you've done something and that was like about i would say like 15 20 percent of all of the content and the rest of the content was just someone on stage crying talking about how they were a teacher now someone on stage telling their story about you know the the like kind of it came like thick and fast it, it, just the amount of people like talk, the amount of actually talking about or click funnel stuff like that you have people at the end of that five days spending like two thousand dollars on the on on the thing going oh yeah and by the way what's a funnel like (laughs) what like you just spent two thousand pounds on funnel software and you don't have a clue what a funnel is i mean that is utter genius like just the the overlaying all of that on top of it to sell something to to people who who uh, you know 
I think the majority of people in there, uh, pe- people who've ever heard about funnels before, you were talking about people who have been, you know, sold on the dream of starting their own business and things like that. And just pure storytelling, pure emotion, pure talking about outcomes, benefits, outcomes, benefits, you know, future pacing mm-hmm. and, you know, wrapping that all up in, 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 you know, and, and aligning software is that it, it's just that exact thing that, um, yeah, Eugene Schwartz said about, you know, you can't make people buy something, but you can channel their desire, you know, your, your, into your product. And that's exactly what it was. And I think it's a kind of a really great lesson. I mean, there's going to be hundreds of people in a year's time who have never used it are going to just cancel and, and, and everything else like that. They're not going to get it true, but there will be a few. I just, I, I, it, it's just a perfect example how, uh, how powerful storytelling is mm-hmm. and how, you just still don't see it used enough, uh, right. even though you know we're you know, talking about it as well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's to me, it's it's the ultimate way to build your cult because you're having other people tell their story about how this cult saved their life. And, yeah, uh, yeah, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's not, everyone always thinks it. Oh, oh, yeah, when I've got when I've got my little cult following stuff, I've got to tell you my story all the time and things like that. But it's bringing it's it's creating like like folklore is creating like these stories that other people have like in our in our you know uh, running group and everything we had someone that ran a, a race called the marathon de saab um across the you know, across the sahara but they had tb when they ran it and you're like what that i mean running that race is pretty hard but to do it with tb is incredible um but so we turned that into a story and now she's kind of like like famous within the within within that community and then we have people who you know like make like glaring errors and glaring mistakes and they turn into stories and so you build up all these kind of stories around it that that people associate with it that have this like all these little connections um that, that you know and then people talk about it with each other and they people have all this proprietary language as well you know that they they converse with each other you know and so you know it the, the more that you can bring that to life and i think for businesses you know telling the stories of their um you know their customers and their customer successes again in the uk oh i don't think they'd like that i don't <laughs> think they'd want to talk about that i just uh i'm not sure we should ask them very, very difficult but you know, bringing those to life is the is, is probably like the most effective way to to you know to to get people to buy in emotionally. Um, mm. so you don't actually have to do the selling that hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, getting somebody else to share your story. You know, everybody has these phones. Okay. Yeah. Ask them to share their story. Put it on your website. Put it on your social pages. Put it everywhere. Now they're selling your brand, your product, your service your cult to other people you're not actually doing it they are and yeah yeah that, I mean, that, that's the that, prime example of how to, to to build it even bigger and the other i mean the other thing is that you know people forget when we talk about um you know i mean like the one thing i think people struggle with you know that comes to us and go say oh, i don't know how to talk about my business or i don't know how to talk about my brand or i don't know how to do that and you know as a as a kind of a, as a you know we know as as, as, as copywriters is that you you don't have to be creative you don't have to come up with those things like just go and speak to the people who are using your services that are you know fans of yours like see the language that they use to describe you um you know and those that'll be where you get that from you don't have to come up with it yourself someone else will come up with a better way of talking about you than you will and that's you know we we went to we were we got invited to a, a, a the national running show in, in the uk and we, they give us a stage now called the ultra zone stage and uh <laughs> you know we go there and they, we present to loads of people and it, i just we still don't understand why they want us there but it, it's very big and it's um uh very uh fun and um we used to have like a stand there and everything. And so um, people would come up and say, oh, what's yeah, what's your podcast about? What's all this about? And I'd be like, oh, I don't know. it's just a podcast and stuff like that. <laughs> and so they stopped me from being on the stand because it would put people off. And so then I listened to them talking about it and like the enthusiasm, the way they described it, the way that they described how it made them felt when they talked about, you know, the community. And I'm like, like yeah why am I even like why am I I mean I because I don't really want to sell it to people because I'm like you know I'm not bothered whether you're part of it or not but they are like they're because they're you know they're it means so much to them they're happy to recruit and it's always that thing of like you know new recruits are the best at recruiting as we find and you know the language that they use the way the enthusiasm they bring to it everything else like that that is who you want going out as your your little cells into the into the uh into the atmosphere and you know around spreading the word insidiously telling people and um, making them come back to you. So yeah, I mean that's the that's the that's the thing, isn't it? You know, and there's so much media to do it now. It's mm-hmm. so easy to do it. You know, you don't actually have to like 
even even interact with people to to share messages anymore so so yeah it's uh, uh, there's no excuse there's no excuse you know i i I was not a proponent of tiktok for a long time um you know well i'm i'm uh, i'm on there now uh i I noticed you followed me today uh yeah i'll unfollow you after this video is done (laughs) No, it's just uh, <laughs> you know. I was one, I was one follow away from monetizing it. Damn I you! <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been finding and 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 I'm curious because a lot of my clients <clears throat> don't even want to be on social anymore. They're they're just so fed up. They they don't even want to yeah. share their story. And so I told a client, you know, <clears throat> share your stories. I don't care what platform you pick it. So she picked uh, TikTok. Oh my God, it's exploding so big and bold. And and, and she said 8,000 followers yesterday, just in one day. Because one video of hers went viral. And uh, now a whole load of people are going to her website. So, yeah. <clears throat> you know, as a marketer, <clears throat> I can, you know, I like to test things and I like to say, hey, you know, I'm never going to be on there. But then I find myself on there. So you got to try new things. You got to say, okay. Well, that's it, isn't it? You've just got to be, I mean, like it's, it's personal mm-hmm. people putting personal preferences above what works. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, and that's the thing. Like I, I think the key to it is to, to not, is to treat it as, um, as, as, as like business media. Um, I think so. Like, yeah. I think Craig Ballantyne said that, um, you know, you treat it as, 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 you know, a channel that you use and you, you do it and you don't, you try not to become like obsessed with it. You don't get caught up with, you know, um, scrolling. I mean, like the algorithm on TikTok is, is incredible. And and right. I think with reels as well, like that, you know, I'm, the, the, the stuff that they serve you with is just so spot on yeah. for your, you know, I'm literally just. And, served, and it's you funny know, because picture. you can take that same video, put it on TikTok and you get thousands and thousands of views. You put it on YouTube and you get five and you're yeah. like, what? Yeah, I know. I like it keeps everyone on their toes. If it was easy, if it was easy, we'd be out of a job. That was the thing. Like So, you know, but but that's it, isn't it? It's um, you realize just how much is um, just putting stuff out there. And I think it's, you know, it's horrible to say, you know, getting people to like lower their standards in terms of what they do. But it's almost like, you know, we're we're, we're like constantly testing. And this is like the 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 quickest most effective way of testing you know we're testing it you know yeah we go back to those Eugene Schwartz days where you know it would take six months to get a you know a print ad you know into something and do that and now we literally you know we could test like three or four creatives in the space of like two hours and see whether it's effective or not I mean it's just insane you know Um, but the opportunity is incredible in a few years books like this or 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 my books or anybody's books maybe out of date and people are like well i don't want to read anymore i can just listen to podcasts or videos or you know and and so i hope i hope that doesn't change i hope people are smart enough to continue to read uh but we are getting lazier and we have to devise ways to get people's attention yeah that's true i think but i think the thing with the tension is it's always been the same that it's and i think i i, I can't I, I i don't want to speak out of turn here because this is um, no, no, no go ahead no 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 i know i say out of turn in the sense i don't want to no not to you i i, I saw a study recently that said um that rather than um attention span shortening um that, that actually that that's that's a load of rubbish that actually that that people are willing and prepared to watch longer uh, amounts. Of, I mean, if you think about it, like there's, you know, YouTube is is probably the prime channel for you know long form video, and yeah. there are people there that listen. To it. Yeah. And so, if it's engaging and it's right, I think the key is it's the fact is that people still don't um, fully understand that you have to make something engaging. You have to make something engaging. You have to you know really tie in. And I think this way it comes down to. Ha- the opportunity now to to really go deep with a very very niche audience um and very very uh, you know, particularly speak to them and create content mm. the, the the thing is that people don't like creating content like well, they, one of the... they don't like having to create lot they want to go i want to create one good video and i want that to do really well and mm. you're like well that's just not how it works one of the, um, uh, and that, videos, i think that's what one of the videos i watch on youtube is uh out of the uk it's auditing britain where this guy just walks around and films police stations in Britain 
and sees what the the reactions are from the police officers and and it's it's a riot because a lot of the police officers don't even understand the laws in England. <laughs> it's like, <clears throat> but this, yeah, this guy, yeah, I this know, guy, like, that's this it. guy has developed a cult following just from his videos. So yeah. you know, there, I mean, it's, there it, are yeah, it's so like, many it, things that we could be doing uh, to develop our own cult, but a lot of people don't want to do it. They don't want to take the time. They don't want to say, "Well, let me try that." And if it doesn't work in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to call it quits. I, That's I've the been thing. doing I think... this for 20 years. And, and yeah, I still... I mean, the, the, mm-hmm. I mean that's... That's the thing. That's the thing. I, I made that point in the book. I'm like, for all of this exciting stuff of, you know, coming up with these polarizing messages and, you know, you know, picking your enemies and, you know, you know, doing this like, you know, funny branding and stuff like that. And then having T-shirts and making people do funny stuff, you know, and jump through hoops and stuff like there's one central pillar to it that no one's going to like. And that is consistency mm-hmm. and it's the bit you know and it's like the ultimate the ultimate you know the, it's like the ultimate hack where people go oh yeah what's the hack and they think the hack is going to get the, the so, gets them from where they want to go quicker the quickest hack is doing that one thing like solidly for like three plus years right. like you will get there faster than if you try something different every six months for three years you're going to get there fast and that's that's the thing like that consistency and you know it, when i when we were on the podcast you know we went through a long long period of time where like no one was listening to us and but you know what helped was that we were mates so actually it was just two guys just chatting every monday or monday evening or whatever right like quite casually and you know we had a nice time and you know we barely edited the podcast at that point the sound quality was terrible it didn't really matter you know, it just it didn't, we didn't care um but then and that was it and so we kind of got to and then when i was going a bit oh i don't know if we should bother then david would be like oh no no no, it's good it's good it's good and then when david was just like oh i don't know if i can do it anymore but i like, know good it's, it's gonna pick up it's gonna pick up and so you kind of help each other you have that support and everything but it's that consistency and i think there's if i think you like if you you probably go back and look at the trends of what everyone has ever been successful in anything there's probably the one trend which is you know is that consistency and so it's just like you know don't keep jumping around and stuff like if you are going to broadcast all the time you know fine you know chop channels but but just keep doing it because mm-hmm. the other the other aspect is is that people take too much um pay too much attention to metrics like they say oh like you know i, I keep putting out these linkedin posts and you know i haven't got any comments on them i haven't got any shares and stuff like that and you're like right you're, but you're not taking into account that people have seen those things like mm-hmm. you need to stop focusing on those because i've had conversations with people you know um you know and they've gone oh do you know what really made me reach out to you was the fact that i saw your linkedin post on this particular thing and i'm like i like i posted that like 18 months ago or something <laughs> and they and i've literally not heard of this person they've never clicked on anything i've done they've never, and that's like the like it feels like it's cold outreach but they know everything about me they you know mm-hmm. they know everything that i believe they you know they know what toothpaste i use they know the name of my kids i don't know and and then they're talking to me as though but they've never actually signaled in any way that they're interested in anything that i've done because they're, 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 it's those lurkers it's those people that, that stay longer and it's just through that consistency that eventually those people come out and i think you know that that's the thing that's the hardest thing and i imagine that's the the big challenge that that you have it's certainly one of the big challenges i have but mm-hmm. the big challenge you have with clients is just just getting them to be consistent and right. just getting them to just stick with it yeah you know as we're talking i got a message through linkedin and and it says hi rob oh my god i have your book on my desk at work and this person hasn't reached out to me in 18 months. Yeah. And it was this book right here, Rob versus the Scammers. And, and now I guess a client of hers needs help fixing her, her credit. Somebody stole her identity. I don't normally do that stuff, uh, even though my book focus, my, <clears throat> you know, you say Rob versus the Scammers. Okay, but it's it's a funny book. It's not me going out and but either way, it's it's the client remembered who I was, and it yeah. took time. And um, <clears throat> yeah, everything that we do in life, uh, it's it's going to take time. So yeah, <clears throat> yeah, and so that's why it's, it's important that you know you just you enjoy doing it as well because that's the thing you've got to make the you've got to make the process and the journey right. is uh, enjoyable. Otherwise, you know you're never going to stick at it. And I think that's it. I think there's you know people don't people aren't really aligning with what they want to do. They're following something because they think they they should be doing it and they're just not enjoying it. You know, if you're 
if you if you're good at something if you you know I, I find it easy to write i mean like i find it easy to to write you know reams and reams and reams of of, of copy mm-hmm. um i find video harder um and so it takes more of an effort to do but eventually you know um i do i mean like the fact even i mean i'm, I'm not a very good presenter i'm not I, i'm pretty bad when it comes to like presenting stuff or on camera and things like that um but you know i i now i, I now get paid to do that through through no effort whatsoever of me trying to do that but someone pays me to do that because of a podcast that I did you know just through doing that lots and lots so you know it, it things come to you um when you're consistent and I think that's it and I think that's the message that 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 that, that, that people need to just remember uh, even when you're going through those hard times and how do people find you where do they go couple of places um if you're looking for um help with um like any kind of marketing things like that hello genius.co.uk um jodyrainsford.com is my personal website um i was going to give you the website of my um uh my podcast but i just don't think anyone would really appreciate it um if you want to uh, buy a copy of the book um uh, you can go to either amazon or if you go to how to start a cult.co.uk forward slash book um there's other options on there and you you don't want to share your OnlyFans page? My OnlyFans. I uh, we, 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 in the early days it was only one fan uh, page. So <laughs> I look if I had an OnlyFans page, that would just be another channel where I would be losing money. So I just I don't think I'd even I don't think I'd even I don't think I'd even I'd make given the, 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 the what's it called the subscription back. We talked about it. We talked about doing an OnlyFans, thinking it would actually be quite funny. But it just it was just too much effort. It was too much effort. <laughs> too much effort. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. <clears throat> From across the pond, Freddie Ransford. Go to his uh, website, hellogenius.co.uk, and uh, buy the book. I mean, I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna love it. Uh, if not, I'm not giving your money back. Give the book <laughs> to somebody else. <adios, folks. Amazing. Bye. Cheers, bye.